In this video, we're going to cover a few tips that you might find helpful if you're trying to auto retopologize a hard surface model in 3D Coat. As you can see here, I have some rather simple objects that might not pose too many problems, but obviously as the complexity scales, so does your chance for error or difficulty in trying to get a more accurate result. Let's go to the retopo room, and these two meshes, I simply just ran through the auto retopo routine without any guides at all, and this one on the left actually provided a good enough result that I could use in pretty much any setting. Now if I needed to optimize this for a game model to lower the polygon count, I could simply collapse certain edges. Now, for example, if I hold the control key, I can quickly reduce the poly count in just a matter of you know, seconds or minutes and so on. Let me see how that works. Now, the other one is a little bit more complicated in shape, uh, but not terribly. Uh, let's see. And when you have issues like this, obviously you can just go in and use the split tool. Let me make sure I have the right layer selected. Oops. I'm right click and weld this. Okay, and delete edges, easy enough. And I could do the same thing here. I could just, uh, with delete edges chosen, I could choose edge loops and just remove every other edge loop to quickly reduce it in half, and so on. Okay, and let's go to the voxel room and I'm gonna work on a more complex object. So I'll hide these two objects, create a new layer, and I'm going to switch to a different directory in the models palette. I'll select this object. If at any point I want to voxelize this object, I want to be somewhat careful about the scale. If it's too large, then it's, it could weigh your system down, uh, or you know, slow it down considerably, depending on your uh, system resources. But if it's too small, you're not going to have enough resolution, so you want to find a happy balance there somehow. If you plan to bring it in as a surface mode object where you're talking about just geometry only, no voxels, then scale doesn't matter. In this case, I initially want to bring it in as a surface mode object, but I might opt to make some of the objects a voxel object because uh, it's a little bit more flexible and forgiving a lot of times. So uh, we'll see how it works out. I'm going to check merge without voxelizing here in the tool options panel and if the obj file happens to contain you know multiple meshes in the file then you might choose to merge to separate instances but this model even though i can see gaps for some reason it's saved as if it's one object therefore checking this is not going to help me any so i'll just go ahead and click apply I can choose any tool now uh, to get out of that proxy view. I'm also going to go to the shaders panel here and choose something a little less bright than the default. Right. And so if I hit the W key to turn wireframe on, uh, you can see that it's highly decimated, or at least this model is. And areas where it's really sparse in polygonal density it's probably going to give me a lot of errors with the auto retopology routine so you want to be careful about that you probably want a model that's a little bit more uh, even in the polygonal distribution so you can see there are quite a few areas where the poly count is really really sparse All right, so that's going to be problematic for us if we continue forward in, with this structure so what I want to do though is I want to use a tool a little known tool in 3D code that allows me to quickly separate disconnected parts. In other words, I can see that this sphere is not connected to this other part here. Even though it's on the same layer, it's actually disconnected from it. And so I can right click, 
and choose separate disconnected pieces. This is not available in voxel mode. I'm not sure why, but it's not. Okay. And so you, you can see it separated into a bunch of different layers. However, instead of splitting it all up, it saved a copy of the original where it left the original layer state as it is. So I can just hide that. And now I have basically a copy of it, but it's all broken into individual layers or individual components. So if you're coming from an application like ZBrush where you're working with subtools, that's essentially what you have here. All the components are broken down into different subtools. So as I hide and unhide, you can see the individual components. So I'm going to turn wireframe off by hitting the W key again. So I'm going to release it down. I'm going to start off with this sphere object here. And what I want to do is basically voxelize this to make it more uniform. Let me turn my frame back on for just a second. If I hit the enter key, it's going to switch into voxel mode, just kind of under the hood, but then switching me right back. Again, I'm just going to hit enter. And as you can see here, enter required voxel poly count. So I typically find that in order to maintain the edges, we need to multiply this by 10. So instead of 26,000, we need about 260,000. So I'll change that. I'll hit OK. And you can see that gave me a nice, clean object to work with. I'm actually going to undo that. I'm going to go even higher. I want that edge to be really crisp. So yeah, I'm going to hit the Enter key. And this time, let's try 400K. There we go. I'm going to turn wireframe off. It looks very similar to what I had. And it looks like I had a little bit of nastiness here, some kind of a leftover chaff or something, I think, from when it voxelized. So what I'm going to do is switch back to voxel mode. And I almost got rid of it. So I think my hotkey for smoothing. It should smooth it out quite a bit. Now I lost some of that hard edge that I had, but uh, I think it'll be fine for creating an auto retopologized version. Since we have our original, I'm not really concerned uh, with these individual components. The only thing is I don't want it to be too smooth because when 3D Coat tries to auto detect you know sharp edges it really doesn't like these rounded edges too much so uh, with that being the case I'm going to go ahead and just get started here with auto retopo and you want to kind of guesstimate the poly count so 3000 is probably a little bit on the high side for this but I highly recommend staying more on the high side of your guesstimation than on the low side because oftentimes if you try to push it too low you're going to get an unpleasant result. So in this case because the object is symmetrical I want to make sure that I check symmetry across the z-axis here. The quality setting is best by default and auto density influence multiplier is really predicated upon having parts of your model that need extra density uh, or extra polygonal density such as maybe the fingers or the tips of a horn or teeth, things like that. If I have a simple object like this, I, I like to leave it at zero, but I may just give it one just in case uh, for you know these small areas here, these small recesses. I don't know. So I'll go ahead and hit OK. I'm going to hide these retopo meshes. And the, the first step in the wizard was asking if I wanted to paint select certain areas that I need greater levels of polygonal density. And that's essentially just allow me to do it manually as opposed to 3D coat trying to detect it. So I went ahead and clicked next because I, I don't want to paint select an area. Now it's asking do I want to apply stroke guides. So I'm going to show kind of how it might look if we let 3D coat decide on its own.
And depending on the complexity of the object, this uh, can take anywhere from 30 seconds to a few minutes. So I'll pause while it calculates. Okay, not too bad. Um, not, a, not excessively bad. And I want to point out, even if the result doesn't look like you have perfect topology, it still doesn't mean that you won't get a correct looking result you know, at render time or in the paint room. So let's go ahead. I'm going to hit the escape key to get out of the selection and uh, go ahead to the retypo menu and just merge for normal map with per pixel painting. I'll just make a few adjustments to the defaults here. Let's see, inside, I might reduce that down to 2.5. And on the outside, I might make that 3. And then hit OK. So that's going to go on back occlusion. No. And uh, no subdivision at this point. I'm just going to stick with the defaults here. Because I didn't apply any UV seams or any UVs to this model, I'll just stick with auto mapping. Hit OK. It's going to go to the paint room. And I'm going to hide the root here. And you can see the the result looks good. Uh, it basically looks almost identical to what I had in the voxel room. So I'll go ahead and clear this object. I guess clear paint layers here for this little icon. Go back to the retypo menu. So let's kind of do a before and after comparison. I'll leave this layer, but I'll hide it, and I'll start again. I'll right-click and choose Auto Retapo. I'll leave the same values here. But I do want to apply some stroke guides. So what I need to do is go to an orthographic view by clicking this little cube icon or the 5 key on your number pad to toggle in and out of perspective in orthographic view. Okay, and we'll go to a side view. And with the strokes tool, I'm going to click outside this part of the object. And I can hold the shift key to constrain it to a completely vertical angle. One rule of thumb is don't place your loops close together. Don't intersect loops if at all possible. And don't put too many guides down. We don't want to micromanage this. We just want to give the algorithm some hints, but we don't want to uh, make it so complicated that it's it's hard for it to do its own work. So I'll click here right at the edge, hold shift key to make it perfectly horizontal. And then I'll click it here. Then I'll hold the control key, click, and lay down individual points. And that gives you a little bit more of a sturdier stroke than just trying to do it by hand like that. So control click. I mean, hold the control key down and then just click on your points. All right, so go to the back side here. Go to the bottom view, and because we are working in symmetry and we only have to do this to one side, and by default 3D Coat typically operates from the positive side, so I'm actually working on the negative side of the z-axis, so I'm going to invert the mirror on this. Control click, or just hold the control key while I'm clicking and laying down points. All right, so I think that's enough. Uh, let's see. Go up to a front view. Hit the five key on my number pad to toggle out of uh, orthographic view. I might lay down a few more here. 
back to a top view with the graphic. And because I'm in orthographic view, again, I can just um, click, hold the shift key, and drag. And it will create a perfectly horizontal stroke. Same thing here. All right. So we hit the five key on the number pad. And I really don't like the placement of this. I, I'm going to undo this one. And I'm just going to do it manually. Top view with the graphic. And just click, hold shift key, and drag it. And I can continue the line here by uh, holding the control key. And I'm going to click and place points here. Right along the edge. So I'm pretty happy with that. Oh, back to top view again. And I'm going to hold the control key down while clicking my points. And so uh, I kind of want to keep a little bit of distance away from these other guides. I just want to give the algorithm enough information to know that I want the edge flow to be very explicit here along this edge. Okay, so let's hit next. And I'll pause again while it calculates. Okay, and so with all those selected, I'm just going to hit the escape key to uh, deselect them all. And it looks like it uh, adhered uh, to the guides that I laid down a little bit more strictly. And that's about what I wanted. I'll come out of orthographic view by hitting the five key on the number pad. And so, uh, yeah, I can try slide edges here and make sure edge loops is checked. And I can drag that all the way to the corner there. Probably. And then with the select tool, I can actually select edges. I've got a hot key for edge loop here. I'll hit that. What I want to do is choose the transform tool, and I can scale that to make them perfectly linear. Okay. And I'll hit the escape key to drop the transform tool. Pretty simple. So much, much cleaner result this way. Okay, and with that, I'm going to conclude this video and pick up in the next one by speeding up the playback and finishing up providing a little bit of commentary as I go. Okay, so stay tuned and thank you for watching.